Joining us now is Dr. Alex Del Carmen. He's a criminologist. Dr. Del Carmen, welcome back to Nightside. How are you tonight? Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you for, for participating here. Um, so you're going to comment on a poll that apparently was recently in U.S. News in which students at the top 25 universities in America say that anti-Semitism, uh, uh, a, pro a problem, um, but the, the, the numbers are a little, uh, two-thirds of the students at the nation's top universities say anti-Semitism is at least somewhat of an issue, and 38% the say, say the same about safety on campus. What I'm wondering about, who are these students who don't think it's a problem at this point? That's a really good question, right? And, um, you know, keep in mind that a lot of these studies that are done are, are done with a very limited uh, number of individuals. The sample sizes are relatively small yep. when, when compared to the rest of the nation. But, but even putting that in context, uh, it's hard to imagine that there are people right now in universities and colleges in the United States that would feel that anti-Semitism is not a problem or not a problem at all, right? Yeah. After, especially after so much attention has been given uh, to that topic in the past few weeks. Yeah, if we break the numbers down a little bit, and I realize sample size is always, you know, a concern, uh, but U.S. News and World Report, that's a pretty good uh, magazine. Um, uh, they've identified, in, it, it said, 67% of the students nationally at these 25 top universities, which I assume covers the Ivies and Duke and UCLA and University of Chicago and Michigan and all the, the great schools we, we talk about, they say they've identified anti-Semitism as a problem, with 14%, one in seven, saying it's a huge problem, and 53% calling it a small problem. I'm with the 14%. I see it as a huge problem. But one-third of students polled in U.S. News and World Report said anti-Semitism is not a problem on their campuses. <sighs> That's the number that, to me, is the headline on the, on the story. I don't see how any student today at any of these top universities, after what they've just gone through during the last month to six weeks, would not see it as a problem and as a problem which has been coordinated. Right, unless, unless of course, that 14% is made up of 90% of individuals that intentionally set that in order to be able to skew the data because they have ideological reasons that are outside of the scope of that, right? So if you're an anti-Semitic itself, then you're probably going to say that it's not a problem at yeah, all. Sure, right. I'm not inferring that, but that's a possibility. Well, well, I, right? I do more. Than, I mean, I, I think you can infer that. No, but the number's not 14%. It's 14% call it a huge problem. One third say anti-Semitism is not a problem on their campuses. And again, we're, we're talking about all the schools, many of whom are in the Boston area, Tufts and Emerson. I'm not sure if they're included in it, but certainly all of these Yale and, and, and Harvard and the Ivies and University of Chicago, UCLA, USC, look at, there was, it, it looked like um, a tong war at UCLA for three hours. Um, I mean, how could you, I don't know. Um, this is a scary time, um, and, and you're a criminologist, and some of this does bleed over into criminology. Um, as you look at this, this clearly to me was um, orchestrated, organized, um, and, 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 and planned. Um, this was not some sort of spontaneous demonstration, so, or do you think I'm way off on that, Dr. Del Carmen? <laughs> No, I think I think there were, you know, look, there, there's enough data out there to suggest that they were obviously planned, um, you know, and secondly, that not only were they planned, but then there are outside actors that are coming in to, you know, try to get the students all, you know, wound up about what's going on on campus. Having said that, I mean, the context is important, right, in the sense that we all know that the First Amendment is sacred. Mm -hmm. We all know that people have the right to protest. And we also know that there are lots of different viewpoints. That's what universities and colleges do. They provide that space, you know, for people to have an honest, direct dialogue. Where they lose me, uh, quite frankly, as a criminologist, is where they begin to obstruct, you know, the, the, the passage for students and faculty and staff to get from one office to another. That's a crime, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, to be able to lock themselves in in office spaces. And, and at, that, at that point, it, it could become violent. Uh, you know, you, you're talking about destruction of property and various other components in all of the states in which this is being done, including Massachusetts. All of those are 
related to the statues. They, they, they are simply engaging in criminal behavior, and that has to stop. Yeah, and, you know, whether it's blocking streets, smashing windows to, uh, and doors to get into buildings, it's the same thing that the, uh, the, the January 6th demonstrators did. If they had stood outside the Capitol and sh- shouted and screamed, that's fine. But once you're going onto property and you're told you're not to go onto property and you start to smash windows and doors, whether it's, again, a Hamilton Hall at Columbia or the U.S. Capitol, you, you've crossed that line. Dr. Del Carmen, as always, I, I shortchanged you here on time, unfortunately. We um, had a, a guest that went a little long on more of a local problem. Uh, next time I'll make it up to you, I promise. But I really always Thanks for having me. Your, percep- your, your perspectives. Thanks so much, Dr. Alex Del Thank Carmen. you. How can folks follow you? What, how can they get in touch with you if they want to? You have a website we want to plug? Yes, I do, absolutely. So it's uh, delcarbonconsulting.com, D-E-L-C-A-R-M-E-N, consulting.com. If they want to reach out, happy to talk to them. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much, and we'll have you back. Thank you very much, Dr. Alex Del Carmen.